In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to measure the impedance of an unknown transmission line or piece of coax with a VNA. We're going to use a, the principle of a quarter wavelength transformer. The principle is when the transmission line is a quarter wavelength long, you get an inversion of the impedance. So the impedance look, looking into the line divided by the line impedance is equal to the line impedance divided by the load impedance. So what we can do is rearrange that equation and be able to compute for the characteristic impedance of the line by simply taking the product of the measured input impedance at the quarter wavelength point multiplied by the load. And what we'll do is make it easy on ourselves is we'll make the load 50 ohms and then we just need to look at a uh, quarter wavelength away to see what uh, that, that resistance looks like and then compute that impedance. So the process is pretty simple. We put a 50 ohm uh, load at the end of the coax we estimate the length of that coax. We can measure it or even just uh, estimate it. And then from that, compute uh, a frequency that is above the quarter wavelength line frequency. And the way we do that is uh, if we have the estimated length in meters, we just take 75 divided by that length, and that gives us our stop frequency. Or if we measure or estimate the line in feet, we take 246 divided by that length in feet. This actually gives us the free space quarter wavelength frequency, and that's guaranteed to be higher than the quarter wavelength frequency for uh, the line. So once we have that, that's our stop frequency. We're going to sweep from a very low frequency like 50 or 100 kilohertz up to that stop frequency. Record the resistance at, at a quarter lambda away, and that's when the curve rotates around and crosses the prime axis in the Smith chart again. So it's a very simple measurement to make and then we can simply compute the line impedance. So let's go do it. So here's my unknown coax here. I've got a 50 ohm termination at one end, and I've just got an adapter to an SMA connector at this end, so we can hook it up to the VNA. I've estimated the line length to be about one meter long. That uh, translates to 75 megahertz as a stop frequency. Okay, so I've set the start frequency to 50 kilohertz, set my stop frequency to 75 megahertz, I've removed all of the traces except the Smith chart, and I've run through an open, short, and load calibration. Uh, you can check my previous videos to see how to do that. So with the unknown coax hooked up with a 50 ohm termination at the other end, I'm going to move the marker around until I cross the prime axis the first time. Now we're going from a very low frequency at 50 kilohertz, because then we see essentially the 50 ohm termination. And as the frequency goes up, we start uh, changing the impedance looking into the coax. And just when we cross the prime axis, when we go from inductive to capacitive, which is right there, okay, we can actually read the resistive component of 111 ohms. Okay, so we take our 111 ohm measurement times 50 ohms, and then take the square root of that, and we can see we have 74.5 ohms, so basically this is 75 ohm coax. So we can see the process to measure the impedance of an unknown hunk of coax is actually pretty simple. So I hope you learned something. Uh, if you need to learn how to you know, set the frequencies or run a calibration or uh, do other things with driving the Nano VNA, uh, take a look at some of my other videos. Uh, I've got a playlist that I'll link down below that has all of the Nano VNA related videos in it. Thanks again as always for watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, tell your friends, and hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching.